You know, when you discuss ancient civilizations and you look at the, the great pyramids of Egypt and all the structures of Egypt, they're so magnificent that you have to wonder, like, what was that society like? What was that culture like when those things were up and running? What was that like, man? Yeah. Because I am, I'm, I mean, I'm absolutely not an archaeologist or a historian. But when I look at those structures and someone says that those things are 5,000 years old and you think about how long ago that was, like, how fucking smart were those people? Very smart. What, how, what, how did they know all that? How did they do it? What was it like living amongst them? What the fuck, man? The Great Pyramid of Keys is like 2,300,000 stones. Yeah. They're monstrous. They're so... The, the way it's engineered is so beyond imagination that 5,000 years ago people could... But obviously they did. So what were they like, man? And what happened? What is... I think it's the Graham Hancock, Randall Carlson idea. Yeah, for sure. I think that we had, human beings had reached a very, very high level of sophistication and we got fucking flatlined again by comet impacts. Yeah. And that's the younger driest impact theory. And it makes a fuckload of sense when you see things like the pyramids, when you see things like the, all these old structures, especially ones they can't really date that well. Like that's the dirty secret about that carbon dating stuff. You gotta date carbon. You're not gonna date rocks. Right, so you have to find like organic material in between the rocks, right. stuff that's around the rocks. Right, but you don't really know when everybody cut it. You just make a really good assessment sure. based on the carbon-based data, you know. But the thing is, like, you can't, you don't know when they cut that, when did they move that, right. when did, it, how many thousands of years did it take to set up the civilization? Where the fuck did it come from? Right, how did they get these stones? that were many tons from a quarry that was 500 miles away. How did they do that? My view is the ancient world had the right attitude to this kind of thing, yeah. and the modern world uh, does not, and that we can sit down and learn a lot from the ancient world. A lot of people ask me, you know, Hancock, you've been arguing that there's a lost, there's been a lost civilization in the, in the, in the human story, but what, what sort of civilization do you think it was? Well, one of the things I think is it was a civilization that used psychedelics. I think it was a civilization that emerged from shamanism, but did not stay at the hunter-gatherer stage, but that took the essence of shamanism and integrated it into a very different kind of civilization from our own, which pursued things in different ways. A lot of archaeologists have said to me, but we don't find any plastic bottles from the Ice Age. That means there was no advanced civilization during the Ice Age. Well, hang on, maybe an advanced civilization might have decided never to get involved in plastic in the first place. Maybe there would have been a clear choice not to make plastic. Maybe they did things in completely different ways. Maybe they cultivated powers of the human mind that uh, we dismiss and regard as uh, completely, completely unimportant you know, woo-woo. Yeah, this is the thoughts about Egypt, correct? It's about, about Egypt yeah. and, 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 and about other things. I mean, for the specific example I give is above the king's chamber in the Great Pyramid are five further chambers. And these chambers are roofed and floored with granite beams that weigh about 70 tons each. And there are hundreds of them. And these 70 ton granite beams, which to put in context, a 70 ton beam is equivalent in weight to 35 large SUVs. These 70 ton granite beams have been elevated to a height of more than 350 feet above the ground and carefully and precisely uh, placed in position. It is very hard for archaeologists to explain how that was done using purely leverage and mechanical advantage. You can say, oh, perhaps they built a ramp and, and, and hauled the stones up the ramp, but then you have to confront basic laws of physics. You can't haul a, a stone weighing tens of tons up a slope that exceeds 10 degrees. Then you start doing the calculation, how long a ramp do I need with a 10 degree slope to get to 350 feet above the ground? And the answer is you need a fucking 
fucking long ramp, <laughs> <laughs> which which should still be there yeah. because not a, it couldn't have been a sand ramp. It would have collapsed under the weight of those stones. It had to be as massive as the pyramid itself. So this begins to seem like an absurd idea, the, the, the idea that is foisted on us by archaeology. Maybe the idea that they regard as absurd, namely that psychic powers were cultivated by ancient civilizations, that they could use powers of the human mind that we have allowed to lapse. Maybe that idea deserves further consideration. Um, we have gone down a path of leverage and mechanical advantage. We're used to relying on machines, but we hear anecdotal reports of people who have telekinetic powers, who can move things with their minds, of people who have telepathic powers. And our automatic reaction is to just dismiss all of that because science says it's impossible. Um, be, 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 because uh, science regards consciousness as, as local to the brain and doesn't see how it can exert itself uh, outside of that. But maybe we should open up to those possibilities that we're dealing with a very different kind of culture that used techniques that we have allowed to lapse. And maybe we could wake those techniques up again. Maybe the ability of human beings to do almost superhuman things is resident within all of us, but sleeping. Well, it's pure speculation that they use some sort of a telekinetic power, but it's pure absolute, speculation. But it's absolute that they did something that we don't understand. Mm. If, if you think about the distance between us and the construction, just the modern accepted construction dates of the Great Pyramid, it's more than 5,000 years ago, or close to 5,000 years ago. Great Pyramid is supposed to be about 4,500 yeah. years old, yeah. That's yeah. really old. It's incredibly <laughs> it's like, old, yeah. To, yeah. To think that someone back then could do something that would perplex us today. Yeah. With with modern machinery yeah and that somehow or another they figured this out it's almost like what they had done was leave behind something that was so stupendous so monstrously impressive mm -hmm. that it would transcend time yeah and that you would have to look at it even thousands and thousands of years later and say hey like this this defies yes. conventional explanation this is not a simple and i've seen some of the conventional explanations of the construction of the pyramid and they conveniently neglect those chambers above the king's chamber they do they but... conveniently neglect a lot of those massive stones yeah and it's because it's it's one of those things you just go oh yeah. I don't know.